Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Canadian Independent Media. My name is Ed Johnson. Our first story concerns the greatest mining disaster in Canada's history, and it happened right here in BC, under the not-so-watchful eye of the previous government under Christy Clark. Here's Jack Etkin with the details. Quenelle Lake is one of the deepest lakes of its kind on Earth, and it used to be one of the most pristine. It supported salmon, bear, caribou, and thousand-year-old forest. Unfortunately, Quenelle Lake was also next to the Mount Polly copper and gold mine. Mining is an extremely toxic industry because to get a few ounces of metal, tons of rock must be dug up and crushed. And all of this ground-up waste is, all of this ground-up waste rock is poisonous and must be kept covered in water or stored forever. Uh, this is done in huge lakes called tailings ponds. The Mount Polly tailings pond was four square kilometers in size and held some 20 billion liters of poisonous waste. On August 4th, 2014, the pond failed and this happened. The Mount Polly mine in central British Columbia. Wastewater and sediment poured into Polly Lake, then moved down Hazeltine Creek into Quenelle Lake. Now there are bigger concerns about the contamination moving through the Quenelle caribou water system all the way to the Fraser River. When it comes to an environmental disaster at a mine, few top this. 10 million cubic meters of water in a tailing pond suddenly broke free, sending tons of mud, sand and debris into a tiny creek, which became a torrent and flowed into Quenelle Lake. At a packed community meeting, the company said it takes full responsibility, but it doesn't know why it happened. This is one of the biggest environmental disasters in Canadian and world history and it did not happen by accident. The provincial government and the mining company put corporate profit ahead of protecting British Columbia. The Liberal government responsible for this disaster has now allowed the mine to reopen and its waste basically flows directly into Quenell Lake. No one expected corporate premier Christy Clark to press charges against the mining company, which was one of her big corporate supporters. Luckily, the NDP just won an election, and they are now the government of BC. And what penalties and fines will the NDP impose? What charges will they bring against this mining corporation that poisoned a huge part of British Columbia? Well, the NDP also did nothing. No charges, no fines, no penalties, as the statute of limitations for provincial action basically passed on August 4, 2017. Meanwhile, the government of Canada is still investigating Mount Polly, and they may do something sometime this decade, but probably not. And now back to Ed Johnson with stories on Venezuela and climate change. Thanks, Jack. As we know, Canada's media and politicians have been, have been telling us how bad the Venezuelan government is for a long time. But there's another side to the story, and it's important we hear both sides. Here's a video from the perspective of the Venezuelan government. In the Petardi neighborhood east of Caracas, you won't find any burning barricades or protesters calling for change. No. The only sounds of conflict here are between two children's baseball teams battling it out for supremacy as their eager parents watch on. Everything from this field through to the uniforms and coaches has been paid for by the government as part of the Movement for Peace and Life initiative. And it's those kinds of social programs that have made Patari a government stronghold. Throughout this community of more than half a million, there is overwhelming support for the man hand-picked by Hugo Chavez to lead Venezuela. There are some in Patari that aren't happy with President Nicolas Maduro, but this is still a base of support he can count on. Our president is looking for ways to end this peacefully and make the protesters stop. They have the rights to protest, but they should stop the violence. It is Venezuela's poor that have gained the most from Chavez's Bolivarian revolution. According to the World Bank, social programs and oil revenues have greatly reduced poverty and ensured, for now, loyal support. Now, I have no idea what's going on in Venezuela, 
But I do know that our corporate-owned media and politicians routinely lie to us about everything. This is Vancouver this past week, covered with smoke from forest fires in the BC interior. And this, unfortunately, is only the beginning. Power lines are dead. Oh my goodness. I would go fast. Wow, take a picture. I am. Because of climate change, forest fires are going to become bigger and more intense as the years go by. Much of Canada's forests are going to burn and disappear. It's a disaster for our planet. Here's Dr. Peter Carter. But I do agree with you about the media because I'll agree with, because there are so many scientific reports that I've seen in which they should have been headlines on the first page. And I say I don't read the, the newspapers and I don't, but every so often I do realize <laughs> where the media reports on the science that I read on the, on the internet, I do realize where they are. You know, they're sort of towards the back page sort of thing. There's no sense out there of how huge this is. None at all. So what are the biggest advertisers in the media? Well, it's very obvious. It's the automobile industry, right? It's the automobile industry is all over the media, right? So what's the automobile industry doing? They're, they're building bigger and bigger vehicles. Constantly they're building bigger vehicles. And we have to wake up in a hurry and uh, we have to change now. I read over and over and over that the scientists leading the IPC said that emissions must have reversed, this was their quote, by 2015 at the latest. And climate change is a huge issue that we've got to deal with. The sooner the better. Lots of people think that more democracy in Canada would make our country a better place. Well, here's Jack Atkin again. On May 17th of this year, our Parliament voted to not label GMO foods. Our members of Parliament know that we Canadians want GMOs labeled, but they voted to not label them. And that is one small example of how our democracy is not working for us. One thing we can do if we want more democracy is to reduce the dictatorial powers of the people who lead our political parties. The leaders of our political parties have the power of dictators. And when the party leader becomes a premier or the prime minister, they rule over us with virtually no checks and balances. Democracy is all about everyone having a voice. But in our political system, even the people we elect to our parliaments have no voice. And they can't speak for us. The people we elect to represent us can't because the party leadership can end their career if they dare to do anything the leadership doesn't want. And that is a disaster for Canada. Most Canadians want more democracy, and they want the party elites to have less power. Canada is one of the worst countries in the Western world in giving the party leadership total control over our governments. It's a big problem, and it's something we really should focus on fixing up. It could have massive repercussions in making this a better country. Well, that's a wrap for this week. Be sure to check out our website at cimedia.online for links to more information. And as always, subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive our weekly broadcasts. Comments can be left in both places and we would love to hear from you. So until next week, please take care and enjoy a safe summer.